help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, first of all, we thank you for your grace and mercy extended to us. While we were yet in the midst of our sins, Christ died on the cross to free us from it. So, Lord, we ask that you would hide thy servant behind the cross. The words of my mouth and the meditation in my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the people of God say, Amen. 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 We praise God for what God continually does in our lives in spite of us. Amen. As we looked at this text, uh, came with a thought that you could hold on to for this text today. Looking in the right place makes a difference. Looking in the right place makes a difference. Amen. One of the things that we understand a lot of time is that we always think that we have the answer. Amen. We think that um, when somebody tries to tell us to do something, Reverend Warner, uh, we already know what we should be doing anyway. And we fail sometimes to listen to advice or good advice. And we find ourselves on that outside uh, of saying, I got this, I don't need nobody. I know what everything is going on. And then we find ourselves just like this. We find ourselves looking in the wrong place, amen, for a right answer. And it makes a difference where you look, amen. The, the psalmist says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. And verse two says, my help comes from what? From the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, I, I don't know. Do you know somebody else that, that made heaven and earth other than the Lord? Amen. But, and, and then I ask ourselves a question. Then why are you looking for help in all the wrong places? Why, why are we seeking to find that which we know folk can't help us with? Amen, somebody. Because they're not aware we should be looking. We should be looking to the Lord. The psalmist is clearly that, has identified the fact that there is nowhere else that he can find help but from the Lord. And we need to find out that sometimes it is not the fact that we are asking for help, but it's the place that we and the persons and, and, and who we asking for the help. Somebody say amen. Just because somebody may have a big wallet, help me somebody that maybe can give you a few hundred dollars, doesn't mean that they're giving, you, giving it to you in the right kind of manner or with not expectations of getting something back in return. Uh, come on, help me somebody. You know, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. But we blessed be the name of the Lord. But sometimes we, we go to folk that we say, oh, man, they look like they got it going on. They got this car, this house, this kind of money. And because they shared a few dollars with you, you began to seek advice from them that don't even know where their help comes from. Because at the end of the day, I mean, your 501k ain't going to help you in the end. When the Lord requires the soul from you, you hear your 401k, he's going to look and say, well, oh my goodness, they got a big old 401k. They got plenty of money in the bank. Let me grab them. No, he's going to be looking at like how your heart is, how your mind regulates. <laughs> Because it's when scripture say, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. So we always looking in the wrong place. But in order to get that which God has for us, we got to look in the right place so that our lives can be changed, that we can make a difference as God calls us to the work that's still here. The other thing that we have to do, my brothers and sisters, is we have to be still. He has you right where you are. My goodness. Now, 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 I had to grapple with that uh, after I, I was in. I had to grapple with that for a while. But in ultimately, what God is saying to us is the place that you're in right now, the circumstance, the situation that you're in right now, be still. He got you. He, 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 he ultimately, see, a lot of time our way out and to do something something different and trying to do it on our own and we wind up getting more tangled up than we were tangled up before the whole thing started at all. In other words, we had one rope tied 
to our ankle. And the next thing you know, we got two tied to this ankle, three on that one, and your hands and your feet, all everything you hold wrapped up because we trying to do it ourselves or we have found advice from someone that's in the wrong place. Well, I believe it says, be still and know that I am God. We have to be still sometimes in our circumstances, in our situation. First of all, be still enough to, and be quiet enough to hear to make sure that it's God that's talking. There's so much other noise out there today. You can hear it on, on the TV, the television, the AirPods, the podcasts, all kind of ways, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, all that kind of stuff, amen? It, it comes, information is just flowing all over the place. But sometimes we have to be still because God said, I got you right where you are. Remember, the disciples stepped out of the boat and then they said, Lord, if it's you, uh, uh, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. He's right where he was. He stepped out. The Lord had him. He began to walk on water. But as soon as he got distracted, as soon as he started to look elsewhere, help me somebody, he began to sink. But he remembered, Reverend Warner, where he was because he didn't call back to anybody on the boat to throw me a lifeline. He cried, Jesus. Amen, somebody. That's why the God got you right where you are. No matter what kind of hell you're going through right now, no matter whether it's cancer, no matter whether it's trials and tribulation, no matter if it's the relationship that you're in, no matter if it's mama, if it's daddy, if it's brother, if it's sister, or if it's somebody else that's bothering you, I want you to know today, I want you to tell the devil that he's a liar, and guess what? God got me right where I am. I'll be okay because it's not about you. Because what? God got me right where I am. Hallelujah. And then uh, when we began to think that God got us, uh, remember this. Nothing in the daylight or the darkness will touch you. Hallelujah. If God is with you. He will protect you from all evil. I like it because, you know, at the verse three tells us that uh, he will not allow your foot to be moved. As in the fact that you can just be still right where you are because he who keeps you while you slumber and sleep, uh, behold, he, he keeps Israel. Amen. In verse five says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Amen. The sun shall not strike thee by day. Uh, nor the moon by the night, because the Lord got you. He protects us. He, he nothing in the light or in the darkness that he can't haven't dealt with before that he can deal with right now. Sometimes people, you know, as Christians, we stand up and then when something comes against us, we begin to run to the corner and try to hide away from it. But don't you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? That God got this because he said what the battle it's not yours that I got it for myself. So you don't have to run in the daytime. You don't have to run in the night. Now, I'm not talking about being in a dangerous situation because sometimes you got to step aside to be all right. Somebody say amen, somebody. But I'm saying when we fight against principalities and powers in high places, that sometimes we can't even put our hands on or even see because the evil one is always at work seeking what who we made the buyer so he can separate us from the love of God. But don't you know that if God came for just a, such a time as this to battle, to stand in the gap for you, to put the shield of protection around you, to help you when you're in your helpless state, when you can't go no further, when you need somebody to pick you up out of the muck and the mire, when you need somebody to go before you to make sure that the road is safe, when you need somebody on the side to protect you from the fiery darts of the enemy, when you need somebody, need somebody that's got your back, that's not going to abandon you, when they see that there's more, more against you and you don't realize that there's more with you than against you, that's how God is. He stands up to that kind of foolishness. And guess what? He won't back down. He got to light a day. I like how sometimes people say, well, I'll just wait till night and get him. God said, I got a security system better than anything ABT got. 
I got mine. What about you? Help me somebody. And not only does he, he, does he have us, listen to this. The, the Lord, as he preserves your soul, um, verse 8 says this. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. From this time forth, even forevermore. Now, I know some folks, sometimes uh, uh, their protection is, is contractual, mm -hmm. is limited. They got their three-year plan or, or the two-year plan. Y'all know them cell phones, you got the two-year plan. After two years, you can upgrade, you can do all this. Well, isn't it good to get a plan that's already upgraded? Isn't it good to have a plan that covers all kinds of situations and circumstances? Because I, I found out even with them plans, Reverend Signatary, uh, uh, sometimes you get your phone back to the store and say, oh, we don't cover that. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to read the fine line down on, on page 50 of the contract that we had. Uh, we don't cover that situation. But I'm so glad that if you got a plan with Jesus, help me somebody. It does not have an expiration date, and it does not have any little clauses written in that is hidden. He said he's got to. He said, whosoever believe in me, they shall not only have life, but shall have what? Everlasting life. And then he tells us, hey, I didn't come into this world to condemn, but that the world through me might be saved. I'm so glad that the contract with Jesus is a contract that protects me, whether I'm going or whether I'm coming. You know, sometimes you have to get those flight insurance when you're flying somewhere, and then you have to have another insurance when you're flying back. But I'm so glad that even if I step on a plane that God got me before I take off and while I'm traveling in the air, and when I land and when I get ready to fly back, he still got me in the palm of his hand. I'm so glad, my brothers and sisters, that I don't have a rental agreement with God that's month to month. Huh? I'm glad that he has an everlasting kind of God that always shields us and protects us. And when I'm in harm's way, when the enemy is coming to attack me, I'm so glad, Reverend Warner, that the Holy Ghost shows up huh? right on time sometimes and rebukes my enemy and calls them to fall at my feet. I'm so glad sometimes that, that when I'm feeling a little down and out, I can get down on my knees and call on the name of every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and confess that he is Lord all by himself. I'm so glad that he calls me, not only me, but he covers our families and loved ones too. When they in harm's way, when the enemy is trying to take them out, God steps in and makes a way out of no way. I'm so glad when a doctor comes with bad news. Jesus said, I got a second opinion. There's another doctor in the house, and my doctoring is better than anything that you can on any shore, you can go from east to west and from north to south. You can go up and down, but you'll never find another doctor like Jesus. I know he's all right because he can call a dead man out of the grave that was four days speaking dead and make everything all right. He can spin on the ground and make skill and ready on a man die and he can give them sight. I'm so glad. I got a contract with Jesus. I'm so glad that when I got a pain in my side, that the saints of God gather together in a righteous way, that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous can make a difference in my life. I'm so glad that a pain of a must receive. I have just a little faith. I can move mountains. Anybody here today got a mountain experience in your life, but you can't get over it. You can't get around it. You try to go under it. It just didn't help. You can't get on top of it. But I'm here to tell you today, call on Jesus. Just a little bit of faith in Jesus will move your mountain out of the way. Maybe there's somebody on the job. That's your little mountain. God deals with them all the time. He'll move it out of the way. Maybe there's a sickness that's got in your body. He moved those mountains.
mountains, but anyway, God, it's so John, uh, he didn't have leprosy, so Jesus didn't go, show himself to the priest, and that's, they get part of the leprosy, but then you fade away, my brothers and sisters of God. I can do that. Uh, he has all power in his hands. Uh, he can raise the dead. Uh, give sight to the blind. He can speak to the wind and they can make it calm. So I don't know about you, but you're looking uh, in all the wrong places. Uh, if you look to the hill uh, from which comes your help, uh, just know that our help does not come from the White House. Uh, our help does not come from Congress uh, or the city council. But our of our help, every help that we got uh, comes from the Lord. Uh, do I have a witness in the place uh, that you know where your help comes from? Uh, Mama didn't give you your help. Uh, Daddy didn't give you your help. Uh, what? Hallelujah. Jesus gave me my help. Uh, my hope is built uh, on nothing less uh, than Jesus' blood. Yes, I bet not trust uh, the sweetest frame, but I totally lean on the Jesus' name. Because anybody looking somewhere else for your help, uh, it won't do you no good. Uh, somebody said I went to the doctor. I took the prescription they gave me for about two hours. Uh, I was all right, uh, but the pain came back. Uh, and Grandma came in the room uh, and said, boy, you need to last the Lord. Uh, you got down on your knees and said, Lord, help me, please, in my circumstances. And all of a sudden, the pain was gone. You didn't have to take no more pills. I'll come on, give him glory. Give me worthy to be praised. I will lift the eyes up to the hills. So we're coming. My help, our help, your help. From the Lord. Give God praise in the house. And he's worthy. Hallelujah. I wonder if I had two or three folks in the house that showed sure up been through something. But beyond the shadow of doubt, you heard what the doctor said. But Jesus had another story. And he said that it will be alright if you just keep on looking in the right place. And if you look in the right place,